India is a really fascinating country, not because of the history they have, which is really complicated to understand the history and the, and 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 of part of their of their um, society and going on. It's one of the largest population. It has one of the largest population. One billion, right? One point two billion or something. Like one point three, one point four now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You don't ridiculous. have a count, man. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, but there's a theory in international relations of the two clash power. So back in the 19th century, a little bit starting in the 20th century, when one, um, the UK was the largest, one of, was the biggest power. But then Germany came and they was like, hey, I want to fight you. Let's, let's fight. So let's, it's just like a local fight bar. I, I usually use this example. So one of the musculous guys, they say, hey, I'm more musculous. No, I'm more musculous. And they start to beat up each other. But there's a small guy in front of them and just analyzing this, this, uh, this, this scenario. Yeah. Once the guys are pretty much beat up, they, they didn't kill each other. They beat up. Yeah. So the little guy rises up and he just punched them and he wins. <laughs> that's, that's what happened with the U.S. Yeah. The <laughs> Germany... And the UK, they started to fight each other. The UK, at, at, at the end, they won. And the first, and at the end of the, of the First World War, they, they won. Germany was a little bit hurt. And once again, Germany say, I want to have full control. They fight against each other. Both countries were totally destroyed because of the world. And the US came into power. And it became the largest, the superpower. Correct. Now in days. The U.S. and China. The right. U.S. and China trying to fight each other. Who has the economic, as in, well, the economic um, factor, the economic factor, the society factor, like the human capital. Um, the and political the land, too. Yeah. Political too. The land distribution, enough land to overcome to be the next superpower. People will say, Germany. No, Germany has an old population, really small country. Geographically, not really, um, it's not really good, the demogra- demographics. Sure. Russia, Russia is a too large, uh, too large territory, which half of them is pretty much ice. Small population, really um, tricky economy, like a weak economy, pretty much. Uh, some people say... Um, some African countries like Nigeria, some other people say France, some people say um, Australia or Japan, pretty much the same. The answer is India. Hmm. It has population, it has territory, it has economy, it has technology. And the most important, they are located in the most important region in the world, which is Asia Pacific. All the, all, the, all the logistics, all transportation has to come through that strain. They're close from all the specific countries, are really important countries. They are, they are close from uh, that strain in, in Singapore. They are really good located. So I think, to be honest, that in probably 20 or 30 years, India will become the superpower of the world. So it's really interesting. Probably not, but that's something to think about it. Wow, that's very interesting. I've actually heard about this theory too, and it's interesting you pointed out. Uh, yeah, the one, another thing with India is that it has a lot of young population. So we have like about our population on average is 35 years old on average. And we're a country of one point, what, three, four billion people. So imagine the number of people who are so young and with a lot of energy. And if you come to even India now, man, the energy and the entrepreneurship in every city, the way it is, like everywhere there's a new business, new technology, this or that. I'm fascinated myself. Um, you know, I had the option to stay in the US after my graduation, but something pulled me back. You know, the kind of energy and the oozing and the bursting of what's happening in India is phenomenal. Of course, uh, right now we're not at the level of the US or China, for sure. But in many ways, uh, we're taking a lot of jumps and leaps. Another interesting yes. thing about India I've noticed is in the past like five, 10 years, there's a lot of um, international alliances and rebuilding of connections. So if you see our prime minister, he visited many countries and some people say it's good or bad, etc. I don't know. 
long story short india is now very much more well connected internationally so you see like it has good relations with russia relatively we are buying the oil a lot of military our military is trained together etc uh, it has good relations with israel also it has reestablished relations with the us since obama and then with trump you know with the visits the um, i mean kind of the only two countries that india has not so well established with i would say in the world is china of course and we share borders so that's a problem and pakistan which pakistan is not doing too well right now and sure. it had a lot of backing from china but what i hear from now is because of their bad policies and decisions like even china has like withheld investment um etc so yes. so far like well positioned right we have good relations with japan and of course anybody who's not in favor of china would also be more with india since that a little bit of a cold war is there between india and china exactly i mean that's why india has a lot of relevance in uh relevance sorry in the asia pacific region um uh, of course i can talk about about theories of international relations how to approach the asia pacific region but in general india is a key player is a really important player and that's why the us you know like western countries including japan canada that wants to be a little bit part of it the us of course uh, korea um so on they want to be part in asean for example asean that uh, comprise all of yeah, these countries yeah country. yeah exactly um they want always to be part of in they saying like hey india come be my friend because i know you are not a good friend with china because you are pretty much the same that's a good thing why because india shares democratic values yep is the largest democracy in the whole world yeah. yeah that's a really important point and china is not so that's why the, to the us and to the whole world it is more convenient to have a superpower governed by pretty much india rather than rather than china correct first of all because of that i know that india has different approaches when it comes with culture but they are more a westernized culture than china and more democratic ideas in china of course like every single country has problems every single country has problems but as you said they are they are making leap forwards really really fast india so i think that and, and nobody is talking about it that's the something really like why we are not talking about india that's why we're in india right not too much in the eyes and then you become a big giant yeah exactly so we have to make you have to put really real attention what's going on what will happen in 10 years yeah india india is one of the largest producers of the astrazeneca vaccine yeah a lot of the vaccine that we receive for example here in mexico were produced in india because once again you have the capital as you pretty much know um you are one of the largest uh, producers of gasoline we here in mexico we ex- import 40% of our gasoline from india oh i didn't know that yeah. whoa so well i'm glad we the manufacturer of vaccine and not the disease <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> i mean but it's once again i mean once again really important to analyze how will um how will play this role of intermediate relationship between the us and china you know india at the end man this is awesome what a what a good talk and you know sometimes i think people living in india some of them get so pessimistic they're like look at you know that country they're doing so well we are shit and this and that but i think internationally everybody's eyes on india everybody's optimistic about india uh, you know exactly. everybody is optimistic about india specifically i will say the us i mean in general you know like the western hemisphere um like the americas they're 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 making that approach um i cannot speak about mexico because i mean we are we are neighbors we share one of the largest um um borders with one of, with the first economy in the world so that's why all of our exports and imports goes 80% to the us <laughs> so yeah. and that's the big that's 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 a bad uh situation or approach at the end we have to make diversified our 
trade agreements, and specifically with India, I cannot imagine the potential that we will have if we have uh, a trade agreement with India, in, the, in, this, in, in this case with Mexico. A lot of Indian companies are based, for example, in Guadalajara. There's a, there's a large population of Indians living in Guadalajara. Mm. Yeah, mm. like um, I, I, I do not recall the name of this company. It's, uh, I, will, I, will, I will remember, but it's a large population of India, of Indians, sorry, um, in, in Guadalajara. Yeah.